So my name is Antti and uh, I work in the University of, of Helsinki and I work with this project. And uh, it's, it's our responsibility uh, in the University of Helsinki to, uh, to plan and to, to somehow be responsible of this, of this evaluation tool or evaluation methodology of this project. And, uh, and uh, the thing that we have been trying to do is, is to somehow come up with an evaluation scheme that is broad enough to fit fit into interests of, of each very different partner with very different uh, programs and very different interests. But even though to have some kind of a common common understandings and common common framework to to work with and uh, and uh, and the one thing is which is important for this evaluation is that uh, that uh, it it somehow is a good fit with with this raised project in general there are plenty of, of uh, principles and aims for the project and not all of the evaluation framework fit well with with this type of project with really participatory approaches and and trying to include plenty of stakeholders and so on and so on so that's quite important part of the of the evaluation and the work with with us in the University of Helsinki. But this is about me, and maybe we can maybe Raniero can can go go second. Well, I uh, actually I don't have very much to say because we are the only partner which is not meant to run an ARU, so we are not going to to do any evaluation on the ties. We are doing evaluation on this on the on the training, but that's a totally different uh, story. I am uh, particularly interested in the in this issue because uh, uh, from time to time I teach monitoring and evaluation. So seeing a concrete case of how it happens on the ground is definitely very useful for me. But uh, as I said, I don't. Uh, we, we are not going to do it. So I'm I'm just listening and I'm basically what I'm. I'm here also because we are managing the training, so uh, I'm, I'm totally, I'm, but I, I'll be more listening than, than asking questions or discussing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, maybe I will go just name by name with the, with the yeah. and Louisa is, could be next. Good morning. Morning. Uh, so I'm uh, Louisa Vipson and I'm representing the NGO from Sicily Cesia. And uh, we are holders, let's say, of the Italian ARU, coordinated by Raniero as uh, overall activity. And um, it's definitely today very important for us um, to see how we can improve the upcoming uh, ties rounds and how to be more participatory within the ARU itself. Um, yeah, at the moment, this, I'm very keen on listening to how after the reporting of the first phase, also maybe some highlights came up in terms of evaluation and assessment of the process all partners are going through. So I'm uh, very keen on um, hearing more. Okay, then Thais is Thank you. next on my list. Thank you, Louisa. Hello, good morning. Uh, I'm Thais from Brazil. <laughs> um, I'm doing an interchange. Uh, I'm a PhD student and doing an interchange in UCN, Spain. So um, in this period, I'm uh, participating on a research group uh, from Rise Heist, and uh, I'm uh, looking for uh, knowledge to uh, learn more and more, and to to understand the, uh, a little bit more to to the procedure procedures and the the ties that uh, I think it would be great to to understand more and participate uh, well of the group. Thanks, Thais. And then there's Noelia. Good morning, all. 
Uh, well, my name is Noria Garcia Castilla. I'm coming from I come from UCM. And um, well, we are now in the process of, of the evaluation of the first round and starting the, the second round of, of our ties that is based on the on the empowerment uh, for entrepreneurship. Um, 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 well, work uh, in general for, for uh, women from from, Suhasa, from Saharan countries. Um, well, we have adapted the um, the procedures that that um, that uh, Andy um, sent us uh, according to to our specific ties with this participatory approach, uh, validation and evaluation, as as Lisa said, that sometimes is is quite complex. And uh, well, we are here um, for paying attention to to everybody's opinion, doubts, and and to see how different uh, ideas of ties can be can be considered with this with this framework for for evaluation thanks noelia and then next is bernadette yeah sorry my camera is still not working but i'm trying to to do something about it yeah so i'm here to to represent manedic um, I'm an intern of, of Menedic and uh, Menedic did the evaluation of phase one. So I was a little bit involved in, in that one. Uh, and now, yeah, I'm here to, to learn more about the next phases and how we can plan our next steps. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Clara. And, uh... You, you have a turn yourself to introduce yourself in a minute, but uh, then before you, there's, there's Marta. If you can have your mic on, it's, it's still off. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Too bad. But maybe maybe you can if you have some some special interests uh, for for this uh, for evaluation or some special problems or questions maybe you can you can write them down down in the chat and, and Ranier and us, I can can have look them through. But please, Clara, you just joined us, but uh, we were just having this introductory round and uh, and uh, just introducing the people and uh, telling if you have some special interests and some special issues with the evaluation right now that, that need to be answered or need to be somehow discussed. Thank you. Hello to everybody. I'm Clara Guillaume. I'm working from the uh, UCM team and um, I don't really have any specific question. Um, I just like would like to share difficulties and and maybe new concepts that our, our members have arised. Um, but I think it's the, the focus is, is going quite well and the happy the, the members of the RU are quite happy with the criteria that have been uh, exposed to them and described to them. And um, we have found that they they feel that the criteria, it's very interesting and also useful for themselves and their organizations. So happy to listen to the rest of you. Thank you. Great, thank you, Clara. And uh, like I said in the very beginning, I, I'm hoping that the, the basic idea first was to, uh, I didn't know how many of us there will be. And, uh, and uh, I thought that if there will be like, 10 or 20 or even more people then then we could have had, had some some kind of a, uh, kind of like workshop thing in the in the end of the session that working in, in smaller groups and but uh, but uh, I'm not sure if it's needed with this number of people maybe we can just try to have as as participatory or discussive event as possible and I just hope that don't feel afraid to interrupt me or, or somehow ask questions or give comments at any any stage. I have some slides on because for me as a researcher, it's it's really important for me to 
to somehow understand where does all this come from? Where is what is the basis? What is the kind of like a theoretical or conceptual ideas behind these criteria? And why are we doing this in such a way? So there are some slides about about the kind of like theoretical back, background of this evaluation framework and, and some kind of justification of it. And uh, and uh, that might be a bit boring, but I, I think it's really needed, at least for me and I, I guess for everybody else. When when you try to apply something, you need to you need to know what are you applying. And uh, and uh, this is this is something that we could have a discussion in the beginning and then then go to the practicalities or the the actual criteria or the actual evaluation which need to be like i said in the beginning as well quite flexible not all partners need to have all the exactly the all the same criteria of course they they need to be or the not not all partners need to present the same questions for instance in the interviews with the, with the with their stakeholders or with their their beneficiaries, they they need to be adjusted to the the to the actual field that the research is being carried out or the evaluation being is being carried out. So so just try to try to see them as this is this is as a framework as a flexible framework that can be applied in 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 each of each of the field that we are working with. In Finland, we have these two different ties. And one of them is, it's a long story, but uh, I, I just say some words about them as well. So all my examples may, might stem from these, these concrete things that we are doing. That's why it might be important to you to know. We are working with this, uh, like two different ties. And one of them is kind of like this online forum for young male asylum seekers and uh finnish speaking men and this is this is something because anti can you mm. hey you were blocked for some time okay it's okay it's okay now okay okay that's too bad but okay, we have these two ties. So, so it's one is about online forum for asylum seeking men and Finnish speaking men, and the other is is trying to improve the childcare services in the Finnish reception centers. And this is the the concrete uh, framework that we are working with. Just please tell me if if the video is off or if you cannot hear me. There might always be something with the internet connection. But I will be sharing these slides now, and I uh, hope you can see them. Yeah, okay, great. And uh, uh, let's see, does it work? Okay. Uh, if you need to have a comment or a question, I'm not sure if I can see all you. Maybe you can raise your hand or just put something in the chat or maybe Raniero can 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 tell me if, if something happens there. I, I'm not sure if I, I probably cannot see you all while I'm while I'm sharing the screen. But please I, be I watch I watch the the chat. Yeah yeah so please don't don't hesitate to interrupt me. But uh, like I said it's about theory and it's about practice and how to First about theory and, and how to apply in, 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 in concrete surroundings. This is about the, the presentation. So the objectives that I actually just set. To understand the theoretical framework guiding the evaluation pro procedures in the, in the RISE project. And to be able to, to apply the theory into practice. This is something and this is really not an easy objective or objectives to achieve and uh, this is something that we probably need to work throughout the whole whole project and well this is a structure that i that i plan to have let's see how it works out uh, first about the theory and uh, then about the practice 
and then I, I thought that we could have some kind of like an exercise in the smaller groups but but let's see if this if this works out and uh, I, I already thought since I didn't know how many of us there will be about that we could many of you maybe all of you have some some real life case your own ties that, that you could work with or if somebody do not have that there's I have thought through some fictional cases as well about about programs in the in the refugee or FDB context but uh, and of course discussion in the end but let's see I, I kind of like feel that uh, maybe maybe we can skip the exercise part and maybe just have a discussion and maybe raise some some concrete issues some concrete problems that people have and I guess was it Noelia already said that uh, that uh, there there have been some questions from the from the ARU representatives or some some problems and some some issues that that can be brought up in the in the later stages of this training. Okay, first about some really basic stuff about evaluation, and and of course it's it seems really simple at first sight that evaluation it's it's something it it it's like defining the value of a certain program or intervention or pilot or in this case on or in our case of ties and usually the term is program so i will talk about i will use the term program it it refers to a wide wide sphere of different uh, different uh, kind of like interventions in the ev everyday life of of people or everyday life of different institutions so i use the term program in this case but uh, so it seems to be easy just defining the value really short and simple simple uh, idea but uh, it actually is not that simple and uh, i guess to me an ev evaluator is is actually stuck with the huge amount of complexities is and messiness of of everyday life when he or she enters the field of evaluation and the first thing is usually that is defined in the in the evaluation studies is that usually little happens sometimes nothing happens when you have this program you have planned this big really magnificent great program or really impressive intervention but nothing even though it's applied and it's it's implemented and nothing seems to happen that by all or little happen little happens that might be because of there are countless number of different intruding variables different other interventions other changes that might be taking place at the same time and other like huge amount of uh, different issues that might be related to structural conditions of different institutions which might nullify the effects of even the most impressive program or the most impressive intervention and this is something that the evaluator needs to be dealing with and of course there are plenty of programs plenty of interventions that people have planned and implemented let's say for instance there has been plenty of programs that are that the aim of the program is to improve the well-being of certain group within certain institution and the end result might be that are uh, that are those people who took part who participated or who took the pill so to speak or participated in the in the program their well-being might might be even worse after that but uh it's might be not about the program as such or the program might not be bad in itself but it might be that uh that are the people who have taken part who have participated they have just been more aware of their problems or more aware of issues related to their well-being as a consequences as a consequence of of the of the program and that's why they if you do like uh, this kind of like a a baseline survey and then like this follow-up survey then in the base during the baseline survey they they might have just not thought through all these issues about their well-being but when they when they respond to the follow-up survey they they might have better awareness 
of of the shortages or the or the problems with their well well-being. That might be one one uh, consequence of the of the program of all the interventions. They they objective well-being might not be worse, but they they feel like they are more aware and they they are more competent in in, in recognizing the problems that they have which might be a bad issue it, it might be a good issue but that, that's up to the evaluator to decide and that that those might be really tricky questions okay but there there might be cases also when the desired changes do happen for instance the well-being is improved or is promoted but how to know what has caused that to happen that's that's not an easy question to answer since there might be plenty of other things happening at the same time and of course the next problem would be if the if you are able to prove that this is the this particular program this particular intervention this, this caused the the positive change and then the next problem is how to somehow rework this this great intervention or great program in some other context because there will be different institutions there will be different people there will be different people as the beneficiaries there will be different people like providing the int intervention or the program and this is really a tricky question as well so it's might, might sound simple defining the value of certain program intervention or pilot but actually it's it's really complicated task to do and requires plenty of wisdom i guess and plenty of work and in the in the literature on on evaluation one of the key concepts nowadays seems to be complexity and uh, and uh, like i said before in, in related to this slide complexity is something that is always there when you evaluate issues evaluate programs they are complex things and complexity is a bit different than than being complicated complicated is is something that are in my mind and in some other uh, authors mind as well is something about uh, uh, repairing a car might be complicated. It might be a complicated thing to do, but but it's it's like a car is like a kind of like bounded entity. You can work with car, and it's it's it has few if any connections to to different contexts that the car is 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 lying and the or the the car is just there it's just only car and you can fix it uh, it's really complicated there are plenty of different parts and they are connected to each each other but it's it can be fixed and it can be analyzed as a as a one entity as a one totality but when you try to intervene or design a program uh, in the everyday life of people or different groups or different institutions that are governed by people that's something that is written by complexity and it means that our every program is embedded in some context including other in different several institutions several different structures histories other people other programs other interventions and different groups of people with their very different interests it's not so easily controlled there are plenty of connections to to plenty of places and plenty of people this is the difference for me between being complicated and being complex and and we are dealing with complexity so if an evaluator needs to be aware of these different complexities in order to to assess their significance and and for me and i guess in the race project as well because we are dealing with complexities and we are dealing with different contexts it's it's not the thing is not to try to assess or evaluate uh, or control the context or the complexities because it's often impossible actually so we need to analyze them so context for us should be to me should be as an object of study not not a bunch of simple factors to be tamed or controlled 
So we need to take these contexts, these complex contexts, and and analyze them and analyze them on how they have an effect effects on on our ties that we are working with. Not just to try to ignore them or, or to control them with some simple methods. We need to analyze them. So again, not an easy task. Definitely not an easy task. And concerning the issue that we are dealing with this uh, raised project and dealing with these contextual complexities, uh, we need to exclude some approaches, some really usual approaches in the evaluation business, so to speak. A raised project, like I said in the very beginning, it includes different stances, different ideas about reality and about, about different approaches. The one thing is about its it's really participatory approach, trying to include different groups of people, different institutions, different stakeholders, like multi-stakeholder approach. And the other thing is that we try to implement or design really tailored and in many cases small scale solutions for different subgroups of people. Like we talk about vulnerabilities or contextual vulnerabilities or vulnerable groups among vulnerable groups so so we need it's like really small case and really tailored approach and we deal with different really different contexts like nordic country like fin finland and 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 countries near crisis areas in in the middle east they are really and highly different contexts and they we deal with different groups of people and different different institutions. This is the setting of the raised project that, that sets some, some really important uh, limits what we can do, now what we should do. So to me we need to, because of this, uh, this complexity and this context of raised project, we need to not purely exclude but, but not to take them as such, this kind of like this idea of golden standard of evaluation. It refers to an RCT setting which means random controlled trials and settings such as that. So the problem with this kind of like uh, positivists or empirists like top-down stances of natural sciences for us is that they only answer most of the time they only answer the what, what works question with numbers big enough. We don't have numbers big enough because we work with the tailored and small case, small case solutions. But we don't settle for just answering the what work, works question because we deal with the complexity, we deal with the context. We don't want to be context blind and we don't want to just tell people what is good, good for them and how things should be evaluated. We don't we don't want to put some framework which is not which does not stem from the from the people themselves and this is mostly what rct is about we should be if we used rct settings we should be we should have clear ideas from the researcher perspective what what is valuable what should be studied and what should be the outcomes of our interventions and then we should work from that that that, uh, that stage. So we cannot take this stance as, as such. But there's another stance which is quite the opposite, which we cannot uh, adopt, at least from in my mind as well. So we need to exclude this kind of like purely constructivist, relativist and bottom-up stances of social sciences, quite the opposite perspective which always uh, usually answers the how is it perceived question. How do you like this intervention? This is important and we need to ask this question, but it shouldn't be the only question that we ask from the, from the beneficiaries or from the, from the participants. So, so this might be context sensitive that we are looking for. It might be and often is very participatory coming from the, from the bottom up, from the people. This is important 
and this is something we try to adapt as well. But the problem is that little knowledge is often produced about the concrete outcomes and change provoking effects that the program or the ties in our case might have instigated or might have started in the beginning. We don't need to settle only for asking how do you like the intervention. So moving forward, the realist approach, which is which is something that is this is the approach that we are trying to deal with in a in a broad sense. And uh and this is something this approach falls kind of like between these two positivist and, and constructive constructivist stances in my mind. And it it's the best fit in my mind as well for the approach of, of raised project. So about realism, it's an kind of like a epistemology, kind of like a philosophy, maybe, which says that uh, there some kind of objective reality do exist. This is something that constructivists might be might disagree. And it it exists independent of human mind. This is the key idea. So they are when I go outside, there are trees, and if I if I I might bump into those trees if I if I walk right at them. This is the really simple way to put it. They are not only only in our, in our minds. But sometimes this reality, and quite often it's unobservable and might have different context consequences according to your context. So people in, in this uh, realist science, they usually take up examples from the natural sciences. And gravity is one example of, of a phenomena that is unobservable with our eyes and with, or with our ears, with our senses. We can, we can see things falling down from the, from the tree, but we cannot see why it happens. We have to have a theory to explain it. And of course, the gravity, the strength of gravity is, it, is different in, in different contexts, in moon and in, in, in the earth, for example. So realism is a science which tries to theorize observable regularities and their exceptions in certain surroundings or contexts at certain times and not to claim any universal truths. That is, that if this is like, this happens in Finland like this, it might be happening in different places in different ways. So it's like fallible realism, like admitting that the, it's always, always uh, the, the things that we find, the things that we find through our evaluation project, it's, it's not the final truth, let's say, like a modest idea of, of realism. So the realist slogan in, in terms of evaluation is, is not only what works, like in the, in the positivist sense, but it's what works for whom and it, in which context. This is the important slogan. And the usual example, again, from the natural sciences is gunpower and, and blowing things up. And, uh, and usually it's thought that uh, at, when you apply flame to gunpowder, powder, uh, explosion happens, but it's it's not the case actually, and uh, and the the context, the moisture, the humidity, humidity is is really important, <clears throat> and plenty of other things to to determine whether the blowing uh, explosion happens or not, and there are plenty of contextual variables and different different other things that matter as well. So in the realist approach, it's not about uh, explaining successionist causal relations like gunpowder and then flame like gunpowder is a and flame is b and then when they they occur then blow happens it's not about that it's try to explain like generative mechanisms or generative issues like uh, like gunpowder in a right context blow up if the flame is applied like try to understand the context which instigates different things to happen. This is the, the twist in the in the realist explain, explain, explaining things. So one last slide about the theory. So it's 
for us as well, it's 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 about in theoretical in theoretical terms or in epistemological terms. It's about studying the generative potential of certain programs or ties. So instead of trying to reveal this kind of like successionist causality, like all A causes B because because uh, because A is followed by the P, it's not about that. We try to explore the generative causation, like B follows A because of operation of certain mechanisms or certain conditions. And the mechanism is a, is a key phrase or key notion in the, in the realist uh, thinking, uh, thinking in, in evaluation terms. And mechanisms are things that bring effects in programs. And they are the ones like gravity, they are the ones which is not directly observable, but they need to be explained theoretically or empirically. We need to have some data to explain why things happen. Why things happen if we have this intervention for, for sub-Saharan uh, women uh, and their skills in, 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 in putting up businesses. And if we succeed to do that, we need to explain why, what was the mechanism that made this thing to happen. And not just to say that, okay, this was a success, they, they are starting their own businesses. But we need to be able to explain what was the thing in the program that made it happen. What, was the, what were the mechanisms? And the important thing about mechanisms is that, that they are not the actual program or the actual results of the program. But people are always important. They are almost always thought as such that uh, mechanisms are possible responses of various stakeholders or people. So the programs, they are not working as such. As, as only programs, but they might activate, they might help people to do something for their lives. They might help people to, they might provide people some resources that they can benefit from and use them. But the program as such, they, it doesn't do anything. The people need to be involved. The people need to take the program, accept the program and find useful resources from the program. And the program only might start or instigate certain processes. And this is something we need to need to study. What kind of uh, processes it might start or instigate through some, some kind of mechanism. So the realist slogan says, programs do not work. It is the interpretations of their subjects that produce the results. So people are seen as actors in their real life settings, not passive recipients of some exterior interventions, let's say some medicine. We put the vaccination like, like nowadays, we are waiting for the vaccination and, and that, that should take care of the business. But in the real life of people, in the, in the social sciences, it's, it's not like that. We cannot give people any medicine. We cannot people any, give people any vaccinations, but we need to provide them something that they can they can themselves work with and benefit from. Okay, that was the theory part. I don't know if you still follow me. Do you have any, any comments or any questions? Or any un, un, something that you want to comment on? Okay. Then, if not, maybe we can move on to more concrete or more practical issues. So about all this, about the theory, and when we try to apply it, there to me there's like at least three, maybe there's probably there's more, but I, I just took three basic principles that we need to remember when we do the actual evaluation. So we are doing this evaluation or research in real life settings with real people living their everyday lives, not in, in, in laboratory conditions. So we need to engage with the actual real life of people. That's the first thing that we need to remember to me, at least it's most probably most important. And, and while we do the evaluation, we need to, 
we just we, we cannot only focus on outcomes like i said about the about the uh, intervention for for sub-saharan women we just cannot focus whether they eventually are, are doing their businesses on their own or not but we need to focus on what may make them make this happen what what made this happen or made not this happen this is the most important thing and uh, and uh, it's it's like in the in the literature on on evaluation or realist evaluation people usually use the term opening up the black box of these interventions or programs this is what we should do open up the black box not only say this works or this not this is this does not work but to say why it might work why it might work in this context why it might not work in that context what need to be do done if this if we want this to work what kind of people need to be included for whom it might be planned and so on and so on so the third principle is to pay attention to generative potential of the program and the mechanisms that might be activated this is about the black box opening up the black box so more concretely we need to carefully document the perspective perspectives of uh, different stakeholders and the contextual factors surrounding the stakeholders we need to understand the reality or the, the everyday reality from their, their perspectives not only from us as scholars or us as researchers we need to engage with them and understand what is feasible for them what is useful for them and uh, the thing about the important thing about about realist evaluation is that it's it's uh, method ne neutral which means that uh, uh like contrary to let's say the rct setting which defines the method that you should have this uh, at least two like uh, this experimental group and you should have this control group and you should have enough numbers and you should randomize them and you should use this and this type of uh, methodology but in, in the case of realist evaluation, there are no preset methods that people should always use. They need to be designed for different cases. Uh, but usually it's, it's the, way, the way is that uh, people use mixed methods settings. And uh, usually this opening up the black box of interventions or programs, they, there's a need to have qualitative data. There's a need to engage with people to talk with them, to observe them, to have make some interviews with with uh, with sensible uh, or uh, like key questions with them, not only only focusing on the outcomes. And maybe some quite often the outcomes are, are studied by by quantitative methods. But of course, it's not a necessity. Of course, if they are. If interventions are really small scale, we can use as well qualitative methods. We can interview people, have them reflect on the on the on the on the program. This is possible as well. So the so the main issue is to understand the stakeholders, understand the beneficiaries and their responses to the program. How have they used how have they benefited from the program? What kind of resources the program has has offered them? So the key issue for me, at least, is to analyze the resources the programs might provide for people and how they are utilized. How the people work with the resources they might might have. This is the maybe the key key issue. Okay, then. I guess to raised as a project and as the raised, raised evaluation, then there's these broad theoretical ideas and principles, and then there are, there are this concrete that what should we do, what with method, what kind of methods should we use, and what should we focus on. This should be more or less clear now. But uh, in in raised, the key issue is has been to build up kind of like a in the language of, of evaluation to build up a program theory. And this is something that we did by defining the vulnerability context within each country. 
and answering questions, why should the program achieve the desired outcomes, what there is in the context, in a given context that might make the program work for certain people in this context. And these, these are like uh, putting up the program theory. What, what should we do and why should we do it and what should it good for, for these people and why with these particular people? What is the vulnerability that we are trying to alleviate? And not for them, but with them and in engaging with them. This is the important um, twist in, in raised, raised as well. So what we have done after this, after each country and each partner have, have been clear about the about the vulnerability context and about the kind of like program theory. This is the term that we haven't used in the project, but this is in the terms of evaluation. This is what we have done actually. We have worked with our key stakeholders and tried to determine the evaluation criteria stemming from the mostly from like bottom up, like from the people themselves, from the those who will implement uh, the ties or those who will take part in it. And, and this is something, the division that I have made, like the division between process criteria and division between outcome criteria. And uh, we have asked the people, different stakeholders, how the program should be implemented and what should happen during the implementations. Actually, actually what kind of mechanisms should there be in order to to receive the results that we want to uh, uh, want to have? So this is something that we have been working on. And we have plenty of criteria coming from the field, coming from the stakeholders from different countries. And of course, we have tried to ask them as well that uh, what should be the effects of the program? What should it, what should it do? And this is of course as well important thing. So we try to look for the processes, what kind of things it instigates, what kind of things they should be while working with the, or implementing the project, and what kind of uh, outcomes it should have. And this is, I guess, what people are, have been working with as well in different countries. So these are the, the other criteria that there were Mm, they can be seen from the from the kind of like all the de de deliverable 7.3. There's this is this kind of like a, as an attachment. There's an, a table where you can find all the criteria from the local stakeholders, and this these combined or integrated criteria are based on on those. And to include the stakeholder criteria and to somehow uh, still be still be using the realist framework of evaluation this is this was the the result so far and of course the, this can be adjusted as a in general way and adjusted to the especially to the uh, local local context as well but at least we in Finland we have been since we implemented the first round of our both ties during the summer and and did the evaluation in the in the early early autumn we used this process evaluation framework while doing it we didn't focus on outcomes at this stage at all we just focused on the processes and one cr criteria is accessibility and the level of ease the program is reached by the beneficiaries. If if people don't reach the program, it's it's not useful, of course. They, it needs to be easily accessed. And then there's ac acceptability. This is the question uh, about how do you like the intervention usually? How is it accepted? How the program is perceived by the beneficiaries? But the empowerment thing is, is probably the most important in relation to realist evaluation. And it's about what types of resources the program provides or what types of changes it provokes or instigates for the beneficiaries. This is the, the mechanism part, I guess. What does it offer? How, 
what changes it makes possible for the people in order to people themselves to to make them, them changes for their, their lives and of course it's important since we have this multi-stakeholder perspective we are not focusing only on the beneficiaries we are focusing as well for the service providers they might be ngo workers they might be in finland they they are mostly for us they are also volunteers but they are also reception center professionals and uh, and different uh, coordinators in 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 the doing their work in the offices but it's it's need to be feasible it needs to be viable for the for the service providers as well it in order them to to adapt the program it needs to fit fit their idea of of good work and then there are this outcome evaluation. This is something that we haven't done yet in Finland, but and this is something as well that maybe one partner find it feasible to to focus on, let's say, inclusion, and one partner may be focused on on capacity. But this is something that all these criteria probably do not need to be adopted for every single uh, ties because some focus on more on 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 capabilities some focus more let's say the hungarian case uh, they might focus more on competence to what extent the program enhances the competences skill and or skills or service providers in the, in their case social workers but for let's say for us it might be important to 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 focus on capability at least to what extent the program increased beneficiaries autonomy or agency in the context of their host communities that they know better how where to find different things where to find different places of study where to where to uh, find employment possibilities and from who to ask and so on and so on and it might be about about capacity as well to, to what, what extent the program enhances competency skills of beneficiaries, not the service providers. But it might be that, that one needs to pick just one of these criteria and focus on, them, on, on, on that. But then they are like in a more concrete level, how these criteria could be assessed or evaluated in, in concrete terms. For us, it has been, uh, uh, if I take the example of, of our online group for young men, or this multilingual or multi-ethnic online group for young men, the accessibility part is quite simple, I guess. We count the number of beneficiaries taking part, the distributions of them, who are they in terms of um, well, not gender because they are all male, but uh, but uh, in terms of uh, country of origin, in terms of lingual skills, and so on and so on. And we ask them, how was the ease of access? What about the ease of use? And about the uh, non-discrimination? And uh, and then we we use the recruiters recruiters in reception centers to ask them about the potential beneficiaries not reached or who were not interested in this and why it might have been so and then we studied the acceptability by in the online group it's quite easy to see the adherence or withdrawal rates by by just uh, observing how in, intensively these different asylum seekers took part in the in the discussion how many of them dropped out and then we asked from them about information on how the needs their needs were matched what should be done better and how how is the pro how, how the program in general was received how did they like about the program and then about the empowerment we asked them this is mostly often like almost always i guess qualitative information how was the program used and for what purposes? And what kind of resources or recognition the program provide 
or provided for the for the asylum seekers in this case. And then we counted or we asked or pondered about the uh, bene uh, about the service providers as well, the moderators of the of the online group, and about the frequency they visited the group, and about the intensity they used the, used the online service and provided the service. And one could also this is something that, that we didn't do, but one could count the number of cross pro, uh, cross professional contacts if if it's something that I tried to uh, try to work on. This is something that Hungarian uh, in the Hungarian ties is probably they are probably doing. And just thinking or asking in qualitative terms, I guess, about how the program match with professional culture or professional orientations or institutional culture. Is it a good match or is it something that it's it's like people think it's as, as an extra duty or something like this is this is not a good fit for us. And this is this is too burdensome for 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 us in this reception center or or in any institution. And then there's this there of course this outcome evaluation criteria can be defined in more concrete terms as well. But uh, this can be this can be adjusted to the local levels really like in a in a great extent I, I would guess and all I would think. Uh, capability can be this is because we are talking about outcome we should talk about changes as a as a result of the of the program or as a result of the ties it it doesn't have like i said before we do not have to have like statistical or surveys uh, like this baseline and follow up surveys of course if people do that it's good and it, if if the numbers are, are large enough that can be done and it's it's good even with small numbers it can be done but it also can be done in a qualitative terms like what like uh, in the in the form of ret retrospective interviews after the program has has ended and that's that's totally a possibility as well and maybe for some some partners it's it's a necessity as well so capability could be changed in the level of autonomy or perceived agency, perceived ability to cope in one's surroundings or in the host community and believe in one's abilities in the future. For instance, this is statistical terms, in survey terms there are plenty of different different survey tools or different concrete questions that can be used if one wishes to do that. And inclusion, change in the level of community engagement changing the employment or educational status, changing the level of access to different services. This is just about, about you and about the partners that we have in the local levels. Uh, what are you interested in? What do you try to have an effect on? If you try to try to improve the, the accessibility of services, then to, you focus on them, of course. And capacity. Change in the level of knowledge on local opportunities or rights of refugees, rights of asylum seekers, so on and so on. Change in the language skills uh, or societal cultural awareness of about the host communities. And then the competence. This is well, it's for easy to me to think about the Hungarian case again, because they are focusing on the <clears throat> on the professionals or the social workers learning instigated by providing the program <clears throat> or taking part or kind of like assessing about the professional or institutional transformation what have been learned by doing doing cooperation with with different professionals and different institutions but these are quite broad of course and and they are broad by purpose because every partner needs to needs to find their i guess their own certain specific indicators or certain specific specific questions because the ties are, are so so different but this is the framework and this is the the kind of like uh, ideas which kind of data which kind of settings to to use okay 
what about this about more practical level do you have any questions or any comments or i i i have a comment uh auntie if i may just a question i've done a lot of uh, evaluation of training uh, training courses and in, in the in the theory of uh, training of uh, evaluation of training there are two different types of evaluation which are called formative evaluation and summative evaluation and if i understand well it corresponds exactly one to one to process and outcome is that right summative is is the outcome evaluation and formative is process evaluation is that right yes it's right it's right this is for me these are just two different ways to phrase the issue and uh, and they are they they are they have a to, to me at least in this, this context they have a one-to-one -one relation yeah very good okay so th that's what i thought yes but you said that you haven't started the outcome evaluation yet is that right that's right what our plan is or that what we are doing since we have this uh, this again differs between partners but for us we have this uh, we are trying to implement the both ties in a way that they are uh they are impl we implemented the ties already during the summer and then we did the the process evaluation and and not focus on the outcomes because uh we try to improve the the process or try to provide better ways of implementing the ties in the next stage which we are starting at this stage at maybe the first before we, like a couple of weeks ago, I tried to start the, let's say the online forum for, for men before Christmas, but now I, I kind of, uh, we agreed to start it after, like in the beginning of January. But the, the next round will be as well, like the process evaluation, we try to make it better as a process to work better for the, for the beneficiaries and for the, for the service providers. And then the last stage, it's executed or implemented the third time uh, later this spring and then we skip the process evaluation because it should be okay at that stage we have been trying to improve it like two times and the process should be fine at that at that stage and then we focus then the idea is that the 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 ties as a process is is kind of like there it's, it's finished and then we focus on the outcomes then it should should provide better outcomes i'm quite sure that uh that uh, if we did the outcome evaluation in the first stage after the summer we probably couldn't have received received any any useful knowledge or any any great results but it's more likely after after the third round of implementing the ties and that the second ties that we are working with it's a bit different because it's something it's something that is already there it's not a totally new thing and uh this the first one the online forum is something that hasn't been there and this is uh, kind of like a pilot but uh since we are trying the second one is we are trying to develop already existing service but uh we are in the same way we are trying to trying to investigate or assess it as a process at, at this stage and and have this outcome evaluation in the in the final final stage of the uh, kind of like implementation or well or evaluation in general uh, but this is something that maybe plenty of partners are having difficulties with because of the covid situation there was this great idea to be present to observe the child care services in the Finnish reception centers during the spring already but of course we weren't able to do that and during the autumn we tried again and now we have these two reception centers that we are trying to observe or trying to work with and uh, I was able to go to one during this autumn but and then there was my colleague Marta was about to go to another center but uh, then the shutdown happened again so that 
so we have to settle kind of like uh, for with the data that's that's not so perfect that we imagined it to be but uh but uh, we will we will manage i guess but uh, the thing is the same we do the uh, process evaluation first for the two round for for the first two rounds and then the outcome evaluation and i guess it might be a bit similar for some other partners and at least for those who kind of like uh, use the first two rounds in in testing the ties or in planning the ties and having different uh, aru meetings and stakeholder meetings and then they try to come up with the process best possible and then then do the final evaluation or the outcome evaluation in, in some later stages this is something that i i think will happen nazi has a question nazi go ahead thank you and i'm very sorry that i i, I was not able to uh, connect to the session uh, i'm just wondering maybe it's due to rain i don't know but i have a question uh, as we are here all partners um, i think that uh, the current situation with covid is truly mounting on and it's really affecting the way we interact with individual stakeholders in the thais i mean and i see that uh, at the same time I mean, at this moment, when I see, when I understand that actually the process evaluation, outcome evaluation are kind of the criteria that we use them in the process as a cri cri evaluation criteria, I feel like, can we have a separate meeting just to talk how we are going to manage uh, the COVID case? Because this is not anymore COVID only, but COVID is mounting. So it's affecting people who takes participating, the way they interact. I mean, they're invisible right now. Mm -hmm. And we are dealing with our subject matter is human beings and they're not there. Or they're just, we at, in the time being, we're simply losing them out. Do you think that we may have, or I mean, what could be another criteria kind of mounted in, built in, evaluation create criteria in relation to COVID uniquely, because that has an impact on all these things. I mean, so far I have been hearing on, on, on those issues. Yeah, that's, to me, it sounds really feasible to have that kind of session. And of course, for that type of session, of course, we have this from the spring we have these papers by all partners about the effects of the covid situation but of course the situation now is different it has been like a, not like a exceptional stage but as kind of like a structure <laughs> that is that is there and we have to have to live with it and it's it's a bit different than, than during the spring and maybe we well maybe we should have some kind of a background information before the meeting about about the situation in, in, in each country from the perspective of, of Thai's implementation. But uh, that's a good good point. I mean, I totally agree with you. I'm sorry for interrupting. It's not the case anymore. It's the structure. Mm. Yeah. So I think it should have some kind of unique criteria just coming from the COVID dimension because some are becoming obsolete. Mm. Yeah. But for me the the i have not at this stage i have no great ideas about about adjusting the criteria to covid situation of course that should be done as well but uh but uh, of course the probably the main issue would be to adjust the 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 actual ties to the covid situation but uh and of course some of you have already done it, done that as well noelia has i guess something to yes. say Yes, uh, I was thinking about it and uh, how how have we adapted, and I think that more than a specific criteria like um, from process or outcome evaluation about um, COVID adaptation, I think that it should be considered as a transversal one, as it happened with gender, for example, because it can affect in our case, for example, access accessibility or acceptability because of online meetings is not the same as 
as as face to face meetings or a lack of empowerment i think that perhaps it would depend on each case but but obviously a new perhaps if a new session could could help uh, each in each case to reflect on it i don't know can i suggest uh, an example criteria that, that how we can maybe simulate it for instance as we know we have at the same time our members and they have their opinions and they they represent the society so coming from that example so maybe our members can give some kind of marking that on the uh, evaluation creates that we may propose to them so for example how for example accessibility acceptability empowerment viability capacity i mean for those outcome evaluation and process evaluation maybe they can have some external assessment how much covid affects each evaluation criteria such as something like according to their assessment 20 zero to 20 percent affected by covid 20 to 40 percent it means that how the quality and the quantity of effectiveness in in relation to evaluation actually is not determined by us by the coordinators but actually our members themselves so it shows that you know covid functioning as a structural issue the reality shows that actually the reason we were not there our members show that according to their assessment this is how much it was affected by and it also shows the proof that how much effective um, effectiveness or let's say impact covid had on what we were trying to do on the process and outcome i mean that's just an example immediately came to my mind mm, okay. yeah i think that this is something that naturally happens I think, at least in our case, because when you ask about accessibility, acceptability, uh, how, for example, how different stakeholders and, and service providers have adapted the methodology of the program to the situation, obviously the adaptation to online and to an online format, um, and the consequences of that is, is derived from from the COVID situation. I think that perhaps adding some specific questions for for COVID could be great for the second stage, for the second for the evaluation for the second round. Because the problem is that we are not we are now uh, uh, we are now uh, trying to well, we are now uh, studying the implications and the conclusions of the evaluation process. But the evaluation process, the focus groups with our members, is something that we have already done in 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 ucm so adding new questions because for example uh well it's a very comprehensive evaluation process so some partners would say well for example the ones that were participating more uh, said that well it's a long procedure uh, evaluation process <laughs> so adding new questions could be quite difficult but but as Antti said, this is uh, an open to, to review question and each partner can see if, if there is something that should be that should be added. I don't know if I don't know if I have expressed correctly or and you understand my our point of view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I that, guess that yeah, the basic issue is that that the the COVID situation is one one big part of this adding to this complexity problem that it's 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 bring it it has brought another or different maybe several layers to complexity in in providing these ties and of course I I guess all this if if you use all these criteria in evaluating the ties which is not mandatory but if you use it. Uh, they all should be assessed from the perspective of, of COVID as well. And this is like kind of like streamlining it from the COVID perspective, I guess, in this situation. And, and 
I don't see any big differences between countries in, in that. Of course, there has been quite severe lockdown measures, I guess, in, in all countries, on which are part of this project. But uh, how to do it in practice? I, I would guess that uh, we all have to figure it out in our each particular context. It's, it's a difficult question to, to have, an, have an overall or kind of like all-encompassing answer. I have a consideration question. May I? Sure. Um, now we are considering to eventually include or not uh, new criteria that uh, come out of the COVID crisis, right? So somehow we are trying to, to justify unsuccess of the process and the outcomes. Um, like in our example for Italy, so we started our, um, our training offer, let's say, uh, in presence, then we had restrictions. Uh, so we thought of doing online streaming. We lost two thirds of the participants. So then we thought, let's do only video and you benefit from it whenever you want. Matter of fact, we lost the group. Now, um, from what we preciously learned from uh, this training path we are doing together and what we learned about responsible research and innovation, what really kept with me was the slogans, don't defend your problem and don't justify unsuccess. So the question would be, once that we are under age 2020 and it's a research program, of course, by application, when, when the project was elaborated, the outcome, the foreseen outcomes were different to what reality today um, obliges us to go, right? So isn't it not enough to say the plan for the ties was this? we try to readjust to the different conditions in the different phases of this COVID crisis. And in our case, um, thinking ahead, would it, is it not a research statement to say that online for this particular vulnerable target group is just not working? I mean, is it not a research finding tested? Or do we definitely need to find something new and to ask new questions to, again, to defend our problems of not reaching the target group or of not uh, creating the conditions for them to self-empower? And we, had, we, we try to to justify the unsuccess when considering that it's first major, it's not anybody's fault that we are in these restrictions. I don't know if I was clear in my... I, I contribute, Lisa. I'm sorry, Antti. Hmm? What my interpretation is, maybe overall Antti can answer. I take your point as a kind of structure, uh, building a hypothesis. So, what we try to do is actually we try to actually confirm we actually build a kind of a empirical study and what we try to do is through that hypothesis we, we are trying to see if it's one but it's not happening and we come up with zero you know when we prove it and when we cannot prove it so actually coming from what you said is maybe coming through the COVID-19, maybe under the circumstances, not to create cause excuses, but maybe our hypothesis will produce zero because it's one of the results too, potential results too. Not necessarily every time it can be proved that we end up with one, 
simply our hypothesis, the work we produce, it produces zero. I don't know. That's how I interpret it from what you said. Yeah, but I, I, I totally agree with Loisa that, uh, that, uh, that any result is a result. And if we, if we find out that certain type of interventions or programs do not work with these groups within these conditions, within these quite surprising or unexpected conditions, then, then we have some results and they are important results as such. And, and I'm, I'm quite sure if we use this, these criteria or some of them and, and assess them from the perspective of COVID-19, then, then we, can, we, can, we can end up with results like that. And it's, it's a legitimate way to, to do research or do evaluation. And, and we have to settle for that, I guess. Yeah, I think that this is a good point for social sciences that even better results are results at all. So at least. Mm. Yeah, and, and like I said in the beginning, most interventions or programs produce practically no results or no observable results. But of course, there might be some processes that are not seen, or may, maybe we are asking the wrong questions, or maybe we have the wrong outcome measures to estimate the, the results of the project. But, uh, but most of the time, we don't see any huge changes. And we have to, we have to be modest. In that sense, could it be suggested that maybe we can create more qualitative questions? In that sense, we can understand more about the process, what, what we have been going through, so it can give some rich definitions. Yeah. Maybe yeah, our, I, I, our yeah. contribution could be coming with more quali quality, uh, qualitative questions, not mm. quantitative. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess, probably, of course, all these all these criteria can be can be assessed from qualitative perspective, and it's it's not a problem. And we don't have to use quantitative data if it's not seen as, as a feasible thing to do. And uh, and uh, in these circumstances, it's really important. It's it's even more important than usual to focus on the process and focus on the what happens during the during the implementation of the ties and what happened, what what are the processes there that makes makes things work or do not work there in the field? That's that's what we should focus on. That's that's really true. But of course, if you invest money in research, it's always a risky business, and and we try to people try to produce some interventions, and sometimes or most of the times they they don't. They don't produce any great outcomes, but they produce more wisdom to to next next trials. That's that's for sure, and that's that's what we should be able to open up or she should be able to write write down the wisdom that we that we can can carry out from these from these trials and from these procedures. And, and on this uh, idea, I also was thinking that uh, with the uh, recommendations that we will be producing, we can boost with this wisdom. Mm. I mean, this will be, might be more elaborated than what we thought, considering the given conditions of uh, historical, actual, mm. Mm. really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, clock is ticking and it's 12 o'clock uh, in Finnish time. It's 11, I guess, for most of you. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I guess one and a half hour is, is through now. But uh, this is, well, I had the idea about the working with groups. We skipped that. But this is just about some last thoughts or some summaries about the the, about the realist evaluation, just to repeat different things. I don't, I'm not going to go this through, but uh, this is something that maybe, if needed, one can pick up the most essential things about the, about realist evaluation. It's not about answering what works through quantitative methods or RCT methods, but also asking why the program might work or might not work for whom 
and in which kind of contexts it might work. This is something that it's deeply related to to COVID-19 situation as well and it's it's included there I think. So it requires mixed methods, different data sets, contextual knowledge about the vulnerability contexts and most importantly engagement with the field of study which is really there in this in this process as well. Okay, but there are plenty of uh, issues in the chat, I guess. But uh, I don't know if Ranier has followed this. Uh, <laughs> there are plenty of messages. I'm not sure if I where to start, but uh, but uh, this is this is this is it for me, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, what I can suggest, it seems to me that. Uh, uh, the issue of how the the COVID has impacted the implementation of the of the ties is a burning uh, uh, issue, which not only uh, involves the evaluation but it involves the implementation of the ties as well. And because we are uh, as we're package leaders over so package six, uh, in a way responsible for monitoring what happens in the in the arus. I would suggest if you agree that we convene another meeting just to discuss uh, these issues and how, how maybe you all need, for instance, to update your description and, and objectives of the individual ties uh, on the basis of the fact that the, uh, the COVID has, has hit uh, these uh, realities in different ways. And I would like to thank Antti for this uh, extensive presentation and uh, thank you for listening yeah. all right thank you very much thank you auntie see you soon thank you thank, thank you, you very, very much, much. And I have a pleasure a <laughs>